Manaledi, of course, you managed to get this exclusive interview. First, tell us about the circumstances in which this interview was conducted. Yeah, uh, Shahan, it was quite a tense one from the beginning. He wasn't, Tabi was, was not willing to speak to anyone. So I had to speak to him and try to put him at ease for a few days after he was shot. I started communicating with him on Sunday afternoon, a day after he was shot. He was quite reluctant. Uh, if you remember, he first did a telephonic interview with the channel on Tuesday morning. That was how far he was going, willing to go. Mm. Yeah, and that's what he did with other media houses. Yeah. But then I had a discussion with him and assured him because he was more worried about his safety than anything. He was more worried about people knowing where he is. Mm. He was shot in Cobesville in Peter Marisbeck. He has moved. He just didn't want anyone to know where he is. Yeah. So eventually he was able to hear me out and agreed to do an interview on Friday, which yeah. is why I traveled to Devon to do that interview. But until 30 minutes before the interview, I didn't know the venue of the interview. I was worried about flying down to Deben and him probably pulling out. So it, there was a lot of uncertainty involved. And even after he told me where to find him, which was about 10 minutes before the okay. time that we had agreed on, even when he agreed to say we could meet somewhere else, he was still kind of unsure mm. whether to tell me in advance. I couldn't tell the camera people where we're going, so I only told them the minute we got in the car. Yeah. And, we and he had good reason to fear for his life because he was shot and wounded just a week before. Yes, uh, just a few days before actually. He was shot just behind the left arm and another bullet just went through his chest, but yeah, yeah uh, grazed his chest. And he, he says this is not the first time that his life has been threatened. Yeah. And he's now worried because this is the first time that he says he came so close to being shot dead. Mm. And he says these people were so, so, so determined to shoot him that in the middle of everything happening, they kept on saying there were about four people with yeah. guns. They kept on saying, don't miss that one, focus on that one. And he's pretty sure they focused on him. Yeah. So we did an interview in an open space, in a playground, yeah. let's say next to a school. Uh, we can't say where, still, yes. And we had five of his friends armed, standing behind us as we were doing the interview. Yeah. So they were ready for anything. So he's relying on his friends to protect him instead of uh, the authorities, and he's not happy with the ANC? He's not happy with some people in the ANC. He says the ANC as the organization, you cannot blame it because the ANC has got policies that are very clear on corruption. But then he says some powerful leaders are the ones influencing first that he should not get protection even after recommendations that he should even after uh, assessments that were done that confirmed that his life is at risk and then he says he he cannot be fighting the ANC but he knows there are those rotten potatoes in the ANC mm. that needs to be challenged let's take a listen to what he said about the ANC the ANC is supporting me it's supporting its own Kate that we have just been shot for exposing corruption through statements. It's a very funny way of supporting me. The ANC supported Mlule Gindobe, who was alleged to, to, to have been involved in the murder of Cindy Somakakra. When he was arrested, the African National Congress went to prison to go and see him. Right? So the ANC supports those who are accused of doing wrong things by going to them, listening to their story, uh, seeing how, what kind of support they can give. The ANC says we must fight against corruption. We fight against corruption, we put our lives in, at risk, we get shot. The ANC supports us through statements. It's a very funny way of supporting people. He also allegedly says that the president made some promises to him. Yeah, so the bias that we've just listened to, if you remember last week, we spoke to Ricardo Mtembu, the spokesperson of ANC Gwazimunata, who said the ANC in the province is prepared to protect Tabiso Zulu. And then uh, went on to say they are going to meet as an organization with police minister, Biki Kele, to discuss this matter so that they can ensure that Tabiso is getting protection. Earlier before him, ANC chairperson uh, said they also worried, they are concerned about Tabiso and they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that he's protected. Mm. And he's saying when I spoke to him, he's never heard from any of them. Not even SMS, not a message through a friend, not a message to the family, nothing altogether. Yeah. So 
all these promises and all these guarantees they've been giving him, he hears it over the media just like everyone yeah. else. Yeah. And then he says, the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, a Sunday after he was shot in the morning, spoke to him over the phone and promised him that first he's going to get him to a safe place and then he's going to make sure that he's got protection. So he was quite angry when I spoke to him and sounded disappointed because he said, and then I'm watching TV, I see the president announcing that he's going to Japan to support the Springboks. What about my life? Mm -hmm. What is he saying about the promises that he made to me? So he, he feels that the president is not taking this matter as serious as he should. He's not acting as fast as he should when people's lives are at risk. Yeah. yeah. So let's take a listen to what he had to say about the president. I saw the president of the country say uh, when, when he was in parliament that he was going to Japan. And I said, here goes the, a man who promised me protection. He, he, I spoke to him over the phone through, through a phone of another minister. I've, that, that minister told me that uh, the president wants to talk to you. And he handed over the phone to the president. And I spoke to the president. The president told me that uh, they are going to make sure that, that, that I'm safe. They are going to take me to a safe place and everything. Here am I, still not safe. It's making a mockery of the seat that he's sitting on. If he tells me as a citizen, he tells me as a person who's looking up to him that I'm going to be protected, and it doesn't happen. The only answer that I get is that he spoke to me he went somewhere to give instructions, and he was told that it's not going to happen. Then the question is, who is running this country? Is it him? Is it uh, the radicals, the noisemakers, the calorous ones behind him? So let the real president stand up. And of course, we have to try to get comment from the presidency on these allegations. Yes, we are trying to get comment from the presidency. We've got colleagues that are already making those calls. All right, thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. That is Manaledi Mataboke Mashetla.